Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today we're going to continue on with part three in the series on the Toad Digital Interface. What is the Toad Digital Interface, you might ask, having not seen the previous two videos or any of the previous 10 or 12 live streams. We have a digital interface for USB sound card connection to your radio. And what you do is you plug it into USB-C on the computer side, and then we've got pin headers on the far side that will enable you to connect to Carrier on Squelch, PTT, Audio In, and Audio out on a radio. This works for the older radios that don't have a USB sound card built in already. Even some of the older radios than that that don't even have the six pin data interface on the back of them and we get to wire it in by ourselves. This is more of a tinker level type deal but if you're not into tinkering we also have this stuff all pre-wired for you to connect to that six pin interface that I was telling you about. I like to tinker and I want to share with you and I just like to watch the world learn. With that in mind let's talk a little bit about what we've got going on here. This is a CM108 sound chip, that little black blob on there. And what that will do for us is handle all of the conversion of audio into digital stuff for the computer and digital stuff from the computer into audio for the radio. And it'll even handle the push to talk circuit so that we can key the radio up and then send data out without having to rely on Vox, voice operated transmission. I think that's what Vox stands for. The X is a little weird because I guess it's X mission, transmission. There we go. That's how we get from T to X, that makes sense. This interface will get you working with Winlink, APRS, FT8, Whisper, JS8, Moon Bounce, etc. All the stuff that requires getting audio from your computer in and out of your radio, and from your radio in and out of your computer. If you want to see the previous videos in the series, I will leave them linked in the description down below for you where we go over the audio input and we go over the push to talk. This one is the audio output from the computer into the radio, and then we'll go over carrier on squelch or carrier operated squelch. I always forget what the O stands for. It's going to be really high level so we don't lose people who are new and then all the low level stuff we'll take care of that in some future video sometime down the line so make sure you're subscribed in order to see that let's take a look at the schematic when you get into page seven of the manual you're going to start to see the schematics that we're talking about in the video series here the first one is cos we haven't done that one yet ptt two videos ago audio in one video ago and then audio out is this one here i don't know why i skip to COS for the last, but I did. You can see right here that we've got audio out to the radio. Let me zoom in a little bit to, you know, because we can, why not? You can see right here, we've got audio out to the radio. This, this diagram has audio coming right to left. So we've got audio out to the radio. There is a capacitor to protect the radio from DC voltage that comes from the computer or to protect the computer from DC voltage that comes from the radio. Capacitors will block DC, but they will allow AC alternating current to pass. And if you're familiar with the way a waveform audio file looks, since we've seen them way back in the early days of computing in the late 80s, early 90s. Wow, it's been a long time. You'll notice that it goes up and down, and DC is normally considered to be a straight line of voltage. And it's either, you know, 5 volts or 10 volts or 12 volts or whatever the case may be. In our case, we want to block all the straight line DC stuff, and we want to pass all of the waveform stuff, all the audio stuff that we're interested in. After we take care of the protection of the radio and the computer and smoothing out all of the signals and so forth, so we don't have a whole lot of distortion, we go into a variable resistor. And this is, think of this like a volume control. Sometimes you'll hear this called a trim pot, and it's used to trim the levels that are going from one side of the circuit to the other side of the circuit. You'll want to use this to balance out the audio between the radio, which might be too loud or might not be loud enough, and the computer, which might be looking for something a little quieter or a little louder. This is one of those things that you would set once and then forget about it for the mode in question. So we'll bury this on the circuit board and not have to worry about it. Your radio does have a volume control for its output, but not normally a volume control for its input. It might have an AGC, an automatic gain control circuit, which will squash the incoming audio so that you're not shouting at your radio. Hopefully for most audio modes, you'll leave that off so that you can handle that manually and get it all dialed into the proper sweet spot. On the other side of the coin, your computer has its own volume control. And this is just kind of an extra little step to help you balance out the computer's audio output and the radio's audio input to get the levels just right. It also provides a little tiny bit of isolation between the computer and the radio as well in terms of radio interference or things along those lines. The variable resistor acts against ground and sends the audio through. So in this case, we're sending audio from the computer, which is going to be pin three or pin four, your choice, and then make sure your software lines up. Pin three is, 
I'm going to make this up, but it'll make sense. Pin three is the left channel audio. Pin four is the right channel audio. It could be backwards. It doesn't really matter. The point is, is that ham radio stuff is mono and you're coming out of a stereo computer and you might only have one side of it. And if you're not getting it, that might be the reason why. Plug it into the other pin on the audio board or change your software to use the other channel of your stereo system and you'll be fine. So before we get over to the workbench to go over what this looks like on a breadboard, we have audio coming out of the computer from your USB and then it goes into a variable resistor to control the levels and provide a little bit of isolation and then it goes through a capacitor to remove some distortion and make sure that we've got just the right signals that we want the tones from your software and not anything that's too high or too low for your radio and then straight into your radio's microphone in port or if your radio has a line in into the radio's line in port another thing before we get over to the bench is your radio with the six pin connector you have probably seen this before but I wanted to kind of explain it to you a little bit more. And again, real high level stuff. We've got output. This is from the computer side. From the radio side, this would be input. But you've got a 1200 baud pin and you've got a 9600 baud pin. And what happens inside your radio, the 1200 baud signal, the radio has no clue what 1200 baud is. It doesn't know what 1200 bits per second is. It doesn't understand data. Your radio is an audio device. It takes audio in and converts it to RF. It takes RF in and converts it to audio. The 1200 baud data goes through the radio's full audio processing hardware. Your radio may or may not actually have any good audio processing hardware, but let's assume that it does and it tries to clean up the signal on its own and it tries to you know separate some noise from you know separate the wheat from the chaff that kind of thing this is good for low speed data modes which is why they put it out as 1200 on the other side of the coin you have another pin on your radio which is for 9600 baud radio signals and this goes straight past all of that circuitry that i just mentioned and right through the fm chain and out the other side of the radio if it's an fm signal zero processing whatsoever by the radio it's just straight audio in straight out the rf path instead of the 1200 side which is audio in and then through the radio's audio processing chain and then out the RF path to your antenna. With all that in mind, it largely doesn't matter in terms of AX25, Winlink packet, or APRS signals. They'll be happy on either side of it. And you probably should use the 1200 side anyway, because that's the established norm. For higher end stuff like VARA FM, or other high speed data modes, you're gonna to wanna to remove any kind of processing because subtle nuances in bits that the computer is sending through the audio chain, they might get wiped out on their way to the RF side of the radio. And that would mean loss of data, which would mean lots of packet retransmissions. And if you're losing enough data, then you're not going to get your signal through anyway. Again, super high level stuff, but that's the difference between those two pins. 1200 goes through the audio chain, 9600 goes straight out the radio. And we are back at the workbench for workbenchy type stuff. This is where I like to play around. I like to tinker a little bit. And what we have are the circuits that we've already showed you. We've got the PTT circuit over here, which is from this part over to the other side of the board. And then from there to there is the audio in circuit that we did in the last video. And then from there to there is the audio out circuit that we've been talking about today in this video. Let's get you zoomed in a little bit and we will talk about this circuit here in particular. So this is the capacitor that I showed you. This is the variable resistor, that white guy there with the Phillips head screw and the, the blue base. And you just turn it to turn the volume up or turn the volume down as necessary to make sure you're not shouting at your computer or your radio. This black wire here comes through and connects to the ground bus. This yellow wire over here connects over to a breakout connector that I have. This takes the RJ45 from the radio and makes it into some pin headers or some screw terminals so that you can easily prototype stuff like this. On the other side of the variable resistor, it goes through that capacitor and then connects down through this white wire here. And then that white wire comes over here to pin three or pin four, depending on whether you have left or right audio on your computer. This is one of my prototype boards. I actually don't even have the first two pin headers soldered in there because I only had a two by one, two, three, four, five instead of a two by six, but I'm not using those first two pins. That's five volts and three volts are provided if you wanted to tinker with something else in a completely different direction. So that's why it looks like it might be pin one, but it's really not pin one. So audio out from the computer through the white wire, and then it comes up here through the capacitor. It goes through the variable resistor to control volume, and then it comes out the other side of the variable resistor into my breakout board, which then goes into the RJ45 wire, 
that goes into my microphone port. You might have this go into the back of your radio, or you might have this go into direct solder points inside of your radio's chassis. And then that is my RJ45 that plugs into the front of the radio, which is my Redivis RT95 or Anytone AT778UV. So make sure you are subscribed to see the rest of the videos in this series. Check out the links in the description down below for some more information on these videos as they are coming out and some information on where you can get the Toads DI board and the different circuit components that you need in order to complete the circuit. You can get your own Toads digital interface board at temporarilyoffline.com. Or if you don't want to do any of the circuitry tinkering stuff like I do, then we also have a version for you that's got all that stuff sorted out. And this here is the trim pot in question that we were showing you on the breadboard and all the other surface mount components are all taken care of for you. And it turns it into that six pin data port that we were talking about that works with ICOM Yezu or Kenwood radios. And of course you can also custom make the cable and put it into your old fashioned radio and save the hassles of this as well. Make sure you're subscribed to see when the next video in the series comes out. In the meantime, there is a video right over here I think you'll enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.